Determine the dimensions of a rectangle with the largest area that can be inscribed within a circle of radius 5 inches. So we want to find the largest area possible. That means that we want to maximize area. I always consider that my goal, and I like to write down my goal. My goal is to compute a maximum area. In this case, it's going to be the max area of a rectangle. So this is an optimization type problem because we're trying to find a maximum. And it's a good idea to start with a picture. So we have a rectangle that is inscribed within a circle. So first, it's important to know what it means to be inscribed within a circle. Let me just show you a few diagrams. If I have a circle and then I just have a rectangle inside the circle, that is not a rectangle that is inscribed in the circle. And that's because the vertices, the corners of the rectangle, they must lie on the circle. So it's important that you know what it means to be inscribed when you draw your diagram so that your diagram's accurate. Now I like to draw my circle on the coordinate plane. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my X and Y axes. And since the radius is five inches, I will go ahead and go to the right, five up and down, five, basically five in all directions. And then just do your best to draw a decent circle. Doesn't have to be perfect. And now I want to think about the different options, what this might look like if a rectangle is inscribed within this circle. So if you're following along with me, maybe don't draw every single one that I'm going to draw because I'm just going to draw a few for you. For example, let's say I were to pick a point in the first quadrant, maybe a point up here. If that was my, my corner, my vertex, one of the vertices of my rectangle. So then my rectangle would take on a shape like this, something like this. And that would be my, my rectangle inscribed in my circle. However, if I change the location of the coordinate, for example, let's say I choose my coordinate to be way up here, well now my rectangle is a little bit taller and not quite as wide. I would now have a rectangle that looks something like this. It's still a rectangle inscribed in the circle, but it's going to have a different area. And lastly, if I were to choose a point, let's say more over here, farther to the right, now you'll notice this creates a rectangle that's very wide and not quite as tall. Once again, it's still inscribed, but it's a different rectangle. So you can draw any of these rectangles, they are all inscribed in the circle, but just recognize that the area changes as we move this coordinate here along the circle. As we move that coordinate along the circle, the area of the rectangle is going to change. So I'm going to go ahead and label this coordinate, since I do not know where exactly this coordinate lies, I'm going to go ahead and label that unknown coordinate as our coordinate x, y. And then I'm going to shade my, my rectangle here, we're trying to find the area of. So whatever your goal is, if your goal is area, then I encourage you to begin by writing an area equation. So the area of a rectangle is found by multiplying the base times the height. And if you're a person that learned this as length times width, that would be fine. Same thing. So I'm gonna use A for area. And now we need to go back to our diagram and do a little bit better job labeling this diagram so I can figure out what the base is. So the base is going to be this horizontal measurement. And I do not know what the base of this rectangle is because I don't know that coordinate in the first quadrant here where the vertex of that rectangle is located. But what I do know is if I were to start at the origin, 0, 0, and travel to that coordinate that I have labeled x, y, I would move to the right a distance that could be marked as x, and then I would move up a distance that could be marked as y. Therefore, when I look at the entire rectangle, I could go left a distance as x of x as well. Therefore, x plus x down here tells me that the base of my rectangle could be labeled as 2x. And likewise, if I went up y, 
I could also go down y. So my height here of my rectangle is y plus y, which is really a distance of 2y. Therefore, the way I have this rectangle drawn inside this circle with radius 5, the base of my rectangle is 2x, and the height of my rectangle is 2y. So we have 2x times 2y, which will give me area is equal to 4xy. Now, what's wrong with this equation is we have two inputs. We have an input of x and an input of y, and we want to just have one input and one output. So I can't really go any further with this area model. I need to come up with another relationship between my variables. And this is what I often will call my constraint equation. In an optimization setting, there's often something that we're limited by. And in this case, we're limited by the circle. This means this coordinate that we chose, x, y, this point here, it cannot lie outside the circle somewhere here or inside the circle, but rather it has to be a point on the circle. So the coordinate x, y has to be one of the points that lies on the circle. Therefore, the relationship between x and y has to be the equation for that circle. The equation for a circle that's centered at, a, at 0, 0 with a radius of 5. And the equation for a circle is going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. Since the radius is 5, we'll have x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. Now I should mention another way to get that relationship. If you didn't want to think about this as the equation for a circle, you could also think of this as the Pythagorean theorem. And if I were to draw a right triangle from the origin to that unknown point that's on the circle, I can create a little right triangle here. The base is x, the height is y, and then the radius of the circle, which is 5, is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So Pythagorean theorem will also yield this equation, x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. It's just another relationship that relates the unknown variables x and y. So I'm going to use that equation and solve for one of the variables. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go ahead and solve for y. So I'll subtract x squared. Then I will square root both sides. Technically, I will get the plus or minus square root of 25 minus x squared. But we actually don't need that plus or minus when we go ahead and substitute. So I'm just going to use the principal root, the positive which is the square root of 25 minus x squared. I'm going to substitute that into my area model here, and that gives me a new equation, area equals 4x times the square root of 25 minus x squared. And now I have one input, my only input variable is x, and my output is area. So I have a function in a single variable. And if you want to use function notation, then you could change this from area to area as a function of x. So we would read that a of x is equal to 4x times the square root of 25 minus x squared. And this is our mathematical model. This is our function that's going to relate x with the area. So now that we have the function, we can use our graphing calculators to compute the maximum. So this is where I want you to pause the video, grab your graphing calculator, go ahead and graph this function, adjust your window if needed, and see if you can calculate the maximum, and then come back to me. Hopefully you have already graphed the function now, and you'll notice that you do not see the maximum in a standard viewing window. You're gonna have to change your y maximum, and it might take you a few tries to do that, no problem. But go ahead and keep changing your window, changing that y maximum until you can see that maximum that occurs in the first quadrant. I ended up changing my y maximum on my window to 100. And then when I calculated my maximum, it ended up being approximately 3.54, if I round, 3.54 comma 50. That's just rounded to the hundredth. Now remember, the calculator is always going to call these the x and the y value, but it's important that we take a look at the model that we created. 
our model was a of x, and that tells us that this is the x value, and then the output is the area. I like to label these so I know exactly what they represent and then can answer the question fully. So the question asked us to determine the dimensions of the rectangle. So we don't actually need the area, we need the dimensions. And if I look at my diagram and I look at what x was, x was the distance from the origin over to the right hand side of the rectangle. So x is not the base of the rectangle. In fact, I have to multiply that by two to get the base of the rectangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and include a few more of the decimals from my calculator so that I'm not using this rounded answer. So I got a maximum of X is approximately 3.5355314. So my base of the rectangle is going to be two times this value, 3.5355314. Just being careful not to round too early. And this gives us approximately, if I round now to the nearest hundredth, 7.07. .07. And since the radius was measured in inches, then this would be 7.07 .07 inches. So here's one dimension. That's going to be the base of my rectangle. Now looking back at my diagram, the height of my rectangle here was two times the y value. And remember, when I labeled my maximum, this value of 50, it wasn't the y value, it was the area. So if I look at my constraint equation, this was the equation that actually related x and y. So I need to do a little bit of work. I'm gonna use that constraint equation y is equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared to obtain my y value. And then I'll use that to get my height. So let me scoot this up a little bit. Y is equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared. I'm gonna go ahead and use all of those decimals here from that x value, that 3.5355. 314, just for accuracy. So using your calculator, you can go ahead and put that in and get an approximate for y. This gives 3.5355. There's some additional decimals, but I'll just leave it there to these four decimals. So therefore now, we're gonna multiply that value by two to actually get my height of the rectangle. So my height will be two times this value, 3.5355, which is about 7.07. .07. It's a little off, it's not exactly 7.07, .07, but again, we were rounding some of these values. So this tells me that my dimensions of the rectangle, we can say that the dimensions are 7.07 .07 inches, by 7.07 .07 inches, which means that we actually have a square. The largest rectangle that we can inscribe within a circle will actually be a square.